Hi, I'm Jarek Wilkiewicz and I'm a developer advocate. I was born in Poland and like many other engineers, I grew up reading science fiction. In fact, this is my favorite author. My childhood home was actually very close to his house in Kraków and little did I know that his work would have major influence on my life. Did you read science fiction too? Do you remember the moment when the protagonist, while busy saving the world, asks her computer for something? Computer, make it so! And the machine just does it and it nails it. Now, why can't the real world be more like this? For example, when a user says, OK, Google, and asks for something, the applicational service most suitable to fulfill the request should be invoked and get the job done just like that. Today, I want to talk to you about technology based on schema.org actions, which I think is a small step in that direction. With Actions, we have an opportunity to delight your users and bring more engagement to your app. However, we can't do it alone. We need your help. At Google, we have been working on organizing the world's information to make it universally accessible and useful. To help with that, we've built the Knowledge Graph. The Knowledge Graph contains information about entities and their relationships. One of the interesting applications of the Knowledge Graph is resolving ambiguities when processing language queries. For example, the artist's dual core is a band, which is different than the concept of dual core. As far as the strings are concerned, these two are equal, but to a user who is asking their phone to play dual core, the difference is quite clear. Dual core the band is assigned a machine ID in the graph. We like to refer to these types of object-based identifiers as things, not strings. Having a graph entity with a machine ID omit makes a big difference. The Knowledge Graph can also help satisfy user requests with your application. I thought a good way to show you how this works is to actually build a small Knowledge Graph together with you. But first, let me introduce you to my buddy, Sean. This is Sean. We both like music. Sean likes to DJ and spin dance LPs in his free time. One day, we would love to open a record store. We would curate an awesome selection of LPs and on weekends, we would invite our favorite artists to give concerts at our store. Now, wouldn't that be great? Our music selection would, of course, be available for purchases online. We would offer web and mobile streaming access as well. Since today, most music recommendations are provided by computers, we would want to make it easy for computers to discover and understand what we have to offer. For example, when the user says, OK, Google, play dual core, we would like our app to be ready to fulfill user's request. All right, so we have this music store. We are selling LPs, offering streaming access, and hosting events on weekends. How do we express this information in a machine-readable way? And how will it be used? Let's look at a simple architecture diagram. The flow of information is illustrated by the direction of the arrows. As you can see, the crawler fetches data from our music website and saves it in the knowledge graph. The graph is then consulted when a user issues a voice command or a web search. Sean and I publish this information about our music artists and albums on our store website. Now, how do we do that? Rather than inventing a new publishing format, we will apply the linked data principles. The term linked data refers to a set of best practices for publishing and connecting structured data on the web. We will use schema.org vocabulary and JSON-LD serialization to describe the entities in our music store. If you haven't heard about JSON-LD or schema.org, don't worry. Click the links on the screen or follow along. It's pretty straightforward. For example, here's what an artist looks like in JSON-LD. The JSON-LD markup is embedded in an artist's web page on our site. Now, take a look at the same as property. This property will make it easier to reconcile or match the JSON-LD document describing an artist with a corresponding entity in our knowledge graph. In the spirit of linked data, the same as property links the artist with information on another site. This stuff is pretty important, but we'll show you more about how that's used in the next video. As I mentioned earlier, we built a mobile app so our customers can enjoy music on the go. How do we express the fact that our music artist we carry can be listened to using our app? Remember, I want our mobile app to be triggered by the OK Google voice command. Fortunately, we can also use schema.org and JSON-LD for that. A recent addition to the schema.org vocabulary 
makes it possible through something called potential actions. Here's an example. Note that in our markup, we are making an association between an artist and a mobile application we have built. Let's recap. Sean and I described our store using JSONLD and schema.org. So now this information is machine readable. We have also associated our music app with artists that it can handle. Does this mean that our music app will now be triggered when the user asks Google to listen to the music we have marked up? Not quite. First, we need to test. There are several things that can go wrong we want to verify. The crawler has to be able to parse the JSONLD markup we have published. Artists described in our JSONLD documents have to successfully reconcile or match with entities in our knowledge graph. Our mobile app has to handle specific intents so that the music starts playing when the app is triggered. Quite a few things to test, isn't it? Don't worry. To help you with testing all this, we have provided sample open source implementations of the components you see highlighted in this diagram. The website, the mobile app, the crawler, and the small knowledge graph running in a graph database called Kaylee. We have also built a mobile and web simulator to help you trigger the schema.org actions defined in the JSONLD documents for the music store. All right, what do we do next? Now that our JSONLD markup is on our music store site, we can run the crawler to make sure our markup is correct. The crawler parses the JSONLD markup and transforms it into a graph database called triples. It looks like this. If this sounds intriguing to you, it sure is for me. See the second video where the, my colleague Barak will show you how the output of the crawler can be loaded into an open source database called Kaylee. Barak will also show you how you can join the music store data with Freebase, a free structured data repository with millions of people, places, and things. If you would rather skip ahead and learn more about how the entities published on our music store website work in conjunction with schema.org actions, see the third video on this series. Better yet, clone the repository that we have shared and play around with the code before you proceed to the next video. Thank you and have a great day.